Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on April Fool's Day, day after Easter, Sunday, April 1st, 11.55 p.m. Mountain Time 2018. You're looking at the new and improved GFS models coming out moments ago, showing a major snow event in Georgia and South Carolina on April 7th and 8th. I can't make this information up. I wish I was cher cherry picking this data to share with you, but this is all predictions coming true. As we descend into the grand solar minimum, it is expected that we are going to see climatic shifts in the Northern hemisphere this winter, unlike any have seen before dating back to the 1850s. We'll get back to this model but it is showing a southern event here, the 6th, 7th, and 8th, depositing up to 10 inches of snow in Georgia on the 7th of April. Record snowfall forecast for April Fool's Day. No fooling. This is an update moments ago. A couple of bands of moderate to heavy snow have developed over Tippecanoe and Clinton counties, bringing higher snow totals, tripling, quadrupling the numbers predicted yesterday. Hmm, I wonder what's going on there. Highest snow totals can be expected in the areas four to six inches of Lafayette, Crawfordsville, Como, and Muncie. I continue to think there may be a narrow band of four plus inches north of I-70. Locally four plus here in the Terre Haute area of Indianapolis, breaking all-time records. Going back into the 1800s, I wish I could say it really wasn't true. It's not a cruel April Fool's joke. But snow is beginning to fall around central Indiana from 6.30 on. Heaviest snow started the event, began falling on State Road 32 from Vetersburg to Noblesville. He's busted. Heads up. Hide the weed. Spring snow moving from plains to the northeast with cold to follow. They're calling it the Easter Snow Slam. This is serious. We have pile-ups. We're going to go silent here. This guy is serious. He wore his thin tie, guys. This is snow happening not in winter. That is a car that is mangled. And this is April, folks. And this is going all the way through to Philly, New York, Hartford, and Boston. Heads up, Jimmy. The Grand Solar Minimum is taking hold. And he's got his thin tie on. Whew. Thank God. Snowblowers are out. Mid-spring. <laughs> oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Ten plus inches. Millions from the Great Plains to the Northeast in the storm's path. I don't know where Al Gore is. I just got this new electric uh, blower and it's doing wonders here. We painted our faces in honor of Al Gore for the global warming falling everywhere and the massive pileups and deadly accidents caused by his failed predictions. Thank you, Al. Snow will reach Missouri and Illinois by the early evening hours and then move into Indiana and Ohio by tonight. Occasional heavy bursts of snow are likely, which will reduce visibility, as we just saw. Although the snow will have some difficulty sticking to roadways because it's almost summer. <laughs> Slick and treacherous spots will develop in the region Sunday evening. Travel will be impacted as this moves through Ohio towards Pennsylvania, and we will check the models. Now, early on Monday, a new low pressure will develop off the Del Marva. This isn't the only low pressure that's going to be developing within the next week. There is a nor'easter coming in just days that is going to bring heavy snow up the entire New England coast. Yes, that's true. That is what I'm saying, and I'm, we're going to look at the models. By Monday morning, heavy snow will be falling in many of the I-95 major cities. Once again, the snow will have difficulty sticking because it is April. <laughs> but there will be heavy accumulations, breaking all-time records back to 1895. We'll be covering it tomorrow. Thunder, snow, and sleet chills Easter. Slickens Road and winter may not be done yet. Well, guys, it ended days ago.
back there on March 20th. The Easter snows came as feared through the Kansas City area Sunday, leading to dozens of wrecks as an icy mixture of rain, snow, and sleet made roads and highways treacherous. Heads up, Easter Bunny. You better have Geico. Let's check the Weather Ready Nation map. We have winter storm warnings and watches throughout the entire state of Montana getting buried, adding to insult to injury to record snowfalls and the supposed melting of Glacier National Park in Montana. Heads up. We have winter storm warnings across the northern tiers, especially throughout almost 80% of Pennsylvania. Western PA heads up in the Appalachians, including you, Northern West Virginia. You're going to be buried quickly and melted immediately. It's the first week of April. These snows are going to continue to fall heavily through the next week and a half and melt quickly. Heavy snow is expected on Monday in the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, and Central Appalachians, where winter storm warnings are in effect, and they ran out of letters in the alphabet to name this. Winter precipitation will also impact the start of the work week in other parts of the Mid-Atlantic, Southern New England, North Central Rockies, and the Cascades. These areas should expect more collisions. Here's the forecast. GFS model showing heavy snow hitting the eastern Craton in Canada, up to two feet of snow in northern Maine. Pennsylvania, you're going to be buried through several events in up to a foot of snow. And this six to ten inches down here in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia, whew, we're going to be watching it. This model is also showing up to three feet to four feet of snow in the southern Sierras, leading insult to injury to Al Gore's failed models. We're going to talk about more lies and nonsense in a moment. Calgary expecting the coldest Easter weekend since 1940. Not just you, Calgary. 9 to 15 degrees below average. But that's not the big news. 11 Saskatchewan communities snap decades-old cold weather records? I don't think so. Moose Jaw and Prince Albert were set in the 1890s, and we just blew them up. Record cold temperatures reported in 11 Saskatchewan communities during the Easter weekend. These were snapped in parts of the province during the long weekend, including two cities that had records standing for 127 years. And that is a snow boom. Of epic proportions. I hope you took the red pill because we're headed into reality called Solar Minimum 2425. You are here and will be here for two more years. It is only going to continue to get worse and the snow has not stopped falling. Cold weather records were snapped in parts of the province during the long weekend, including in two cities that were Records stood since the 1890s, bringing us back well into the centennial minimum. It's solar cycle minimum 1213, which is very reminiscent of an area we're at right now. We're hovering right here above the 1360.5 line, still dropping down. Prince Albert dipped a negative 33.1 C on Friday, breaking a record of negative 32.8 from 1890, according to Environment Canada's preliminary info, which they'll probably doctor. The average low for March 30th is minus 8. Moose Jaw was 10 degrees warmer at minus 23.1, but also broke a record back to 1899 when the coldest temperature ever was recorded at 20, negative 22.2 eclipsing that by almost a degree. Seismic update. We have moderate quakes in the Ring of Fire region. We have a blot echo here, 4.4, 265 kilometers southeast of Lombasa uh, at a depth of 545.8 kilometers, followed moments later by the 5.3, which it was predicting right here at the surface in Tonga. Heads up, earthquake prediction. <laughs> Volcano watch seismic event devastated Ku 150 years ago. Kau is in Hawaii. And this relates to an event called the Centennial Minimum, where cosmic ray flux was increased at a time we are right now. Very similar. 
which is leading me to an extended warning to the people in the Hawaiian Islands to get out if you are near an active volcanic caldera. Move far away towards the coast or get out of the Hawaiian Islands as a whole. You've experienced record cosmic ray flux effects, record flooding, and devastation to your crops. You know what I'm talking about. Drone footage shows the impact of climate change off the east coast of Newfoundland. Let's talk about some nonsense. This whole article is nonsense because it's stunning drone footage of record ice. Here, we'll look at it. It is beautiful. Now, the article goes on to state that this is normally not the case. There's no ice here now, which is making them worry that something's happening in the Arctic, causing all the Arctic ice to break up and come down here. Are you kidding me? How stupid do you have to be to think that all this ice is now coming down south because it is no longer in the Arctic? We've been showing you the maps of Arctic ice thickness is reaching record volume gains every single day. This ice is not breaking up because the Arctic is melting and heading south. This is building in the south where it is never occurring. Let's look at this article. Footage shot across the North Atlantic captured a stunning view of accumulating sea ice over Brighton, Newfoundland. But according to researchers, this serves as a stock reminder of the impact of climate change. Yeah, especially when we're freezing our arses off because we're going into a glacial period. Starting with the grand solar minimum and descending into a new glacial maximum. <laughs> Usually we only see a bit of ice along the coast. Sometimes you'll see a berg. But that doesn't seem much the case this time of year because it looks like the center of the Arctic. It's going to take a long time for the sea ice to melt. <laughs> and these people are, are using this to claim global warming. There's more ice. It must be warming. Al Gore told me. Speaker at OU takes aim at climate change denial. This fraud, Tim Mann, if you don't know about, I'm sorry, Michael Mann, the guy with the shiny head here, and I support bald people, just not that douche. Sorry, I said that. An, an acclaimed, not, an often controversial, definitely hockey shtick maker who should work in Canada, gave a talk and actually spouted that Global temperatures have been steadily rising, hitting new maximums in 2014, 15, and 16. And we're all burning up. He continued the narrative. He should be shot because he should have shown him the data since 2016. What you're looking at is the global mean temperature anomaly since the hottest year ever, according to Tim Hockey Stick, Michael Mann. We've had a 4.20 C decrease from 2016 till today. That is 0.420, folks. That is a rapid decline. That is more rapid than the Dalton minimum cooling. <clears throat> and we've only just begun the cooling cycle. We have decades more. It's going to continue to rapidly cool for the next two years. So that 420 is going to double. Double your money. I'm doubling up on 1C by 2020. Bipolar fraud disorder. All month climate experts have been telling the press that both poles have near record low amounts of sea ice. This is a blatant fraud. In fact, the Antarctic sea ice edges are very close to the 1981 to 2010 median. And the Antarctic ice extent is 41% higher than the same time last year. And you're looking at the comparison right here. Last year, this year. Last year, this year. They're lying to you. Here's the sea ice thickness 
from 2008 versus 2018. 2008, 2018, very thick. 10 years ago, not so thick. Completely covering the Arctic, not so thick 10 years ago. Record levels. So the information they're feeding you is a fraud. And in the last four weeks, sea ice volume has increased at record rates. Rapidly rushing into the decadal average of ice from 2004 to 2013. And here we can see that Arctic sea ice extent is identical to all the last 10 years. And if you've been watching the videos, Arctic sea ice extent has nothing to do with volume. It is a two-dimensional linear measurement of nonsense. Here we can see at both poles, extreme cold. This is the current GFS model showing you minus 30 in all of the pink areas. Brrr. Fraud much? Here's the direct comparison of the past four interglacial periods. The black line is currently today, zero point. And you can see in all of the models, a rapid decrease in the next 50 years of four degrees C in all of the past interglacials. We are in a time of rapid temperature decrease and there is the data set that is undeniable and I will leave you links to the direct comparison of the past four interglacial periods which are showing you the historical record and here is the predicted model. Historical record, predicted model. And that's a boom. Tian Gang 1 has fallen to earth safely in the South Pacific. No one was injured. And that is a boom. It's done, folks. The world is not going to end today. It's not going to end tomorrow. It probably will not end in your lifetime. But this is going to hit the fan soon. China is building a massive weather modification system to make more rain, which has nothing to do with chemtrails. It has everything to do with cloud seeding. Get the facts. This is a cloud seeding program, which is happening worldwide near a ski resort near you. So if you live on the Continental Divide and you think you see chemtrails, you probably are seeing cloud seeding, which has no harmful chemicals like aluminum and barium involved. So get the facts. The facts are here in the Geoengineering and the Climate Work Booklet from 2009, Science Governance Uncertainty. This is all of the information on all the geoengineering uh, programs that could possibly be implemented in the future. The current scientific knowledge up to 2009, the different types of programs that exist for geoengineering, and the types of... Uh, Climate changes, they may and may not occur based on them. It gives you background information on all the types of geoengineering that is known up to the point of 2009, which is relatively recent. <coughs> but it clearly shows you that there is no geoengineering happening currently. It could happen in the future. But large-scale geoengineering to change the climate on Earth is not occurring. What is happening is weather modification programs in smaller scales to seed clouds and to attack climate in other ways. But what 99% of the public is claiming as chemtrails is simply increased cloud nucleation on increased commercial airline traffic, which actually is having its own geoengineering effect on the planet. And we'll get to that as we delve deeper into this topic later in the month. First, take a look at geoengineering and the climate and familiarize yourself with the types of things that could be used in the future to actually plummet us into snowball earth. And that's a heads up. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. It's changing quickly. The snow pattern is moving further south. There is heavy snow falling into Georgia September 7th. If you think that's normal, please unsubscribe now.